Hey, how are we doing guys? My name's Carl. I'm a third year architecture student from South Australia and you're watching Successful Archie Student, a platform to help you stand out from the rest of your cohort and take your architecture work to the next level. If you're new around here, do consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our future content. Today I'm going to be showing you how to collage things in Photoshop, but more specifically I'll be showing you how to add people and trees to your projects to make them look more realistic and give them a sense of life. This method will also work for anything such as furniture or animals or really anything you want to add to your renders or your drawings in architecture. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Before getting into uh, the how-to of the tutorial, I'm going to show you where to find these cutout people and these trees. Um, I've got a few good sites here. It's mrcutout.com. Uh, this is for people and trees. Scale Goobar is really good for people. And Viz People also has a lot of free packs for um, some cutout people, which is really helpful. So this is Viz People. You just go to the site, vizpeople.com. I'll have the links in the description. And you got some like cut out animals, people, kids, and all different kinds of things. Scale glue bars are also really good as well for individual people. Um, you can just click on the people you want and it's, you can just instantly download them as PNGs, which is really helpful as well. So once you find the person you want, you can start adding them into your renders and your drawings. For me, I've got some of my second year work here. This is a laboratory to help advance our knowledge and technology in space science. So if I wanted to add someone to the scene looking into these laboratories here, I would go to either Scale Goobar or Viz People and I'd go find the people I want. However, I don't want to do that for every project I do. So what I tend to do is add them to a material library. So every person I download, I add them to one of my um, organized folders here so that I can just go into my adults and look for someone who's standing with a back view. And then I can just add someone to the scene out of the people I've got already saved and downloaded. So if I wanted to add someone into the scene here, I would want them looking from behind. So I've gone into my back view. I would add this guy in here. He looks pretty good. Being a PNG, it's really quite easy. You don't have to cut anything out and it's really helpful. That's why Scale Goobar and uh, Viz people are really good. However, you can use JPEG files and files with a white background and I'll show you how to get around that um, a bit later in this video. So once you add this person into here, he already looks pretty good because this here is about two meters head height. So if he's about 1.7, 1.8 meters high, then he would sit nicely in there just like that. However, there are a few things you can do to make him look a little bit better. And I'll show you just how to do that now. So playing around with the shadows and the highlights, it doesn't really look like he's um, fully blended into the scene. Whenever I import a person into my file, I like to go over him with the dodge tool before anything, just to darken him up and blend him into the scene a little bit better. So I'd go over to the side here and use the burn tool or press O to get that tool. I would click on the guy to rasterize him. Yes, I want to rasterize the layer. And then I'll just go over them with the, the burn tool and just darken them up a little bit. What you can also do is you can see that the sun is coming from this way. And so the shadows would be on this left side here, which is already looking good because the file has done that for me. However, I can also go over the side here just to burn them up a little bit and darken them up. I can also use the dodge tool to lighten up the side that's facing the sun. And as you can see, that just brightens up the side and makes it look a little bit more realistic to blend them in. You don't want to do this too much because it can decolorize it or ruin the contrast, but I think that's starting to look good. What you can also notice is that his legs don't have any shadows on him. Uh, the upper body's fine because it's not facing up against anything, but the legs could use with uh, some kind of drop shadow. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So first things first, you want to use the polygon lasso tool and just cut around the area which you want to add a shadow to. It doesn't have to be perfect. What you can do then is you can layer that via a copy. Uh, so if I'm on the right layer here, I can right click that and go layer via copy. And this creates a copy of his legs, which are just floating there like, like that there, which is a bit weird. Now what I can do is go to the effects panel down here with the layer selected, add a drop shadow. And as you can see, this kind of adds a bit of a shadow in. And this isn't perfect considering the sun's on this side, but um, this is just for demonstration's purpose to show just how that would work. And that looks, you know, pretty good considering I haven't changed any of the settings. But what happens if you have a file which you found on the internet which has a white background? Say something like this guy here. To get rid of that white background, there's a few things you can do. You can either set the preset to multiply and that kind of gives him a bit of an opacity. As you can see, that doesn't really work too well um, because he's now transparent and I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to undo that. 
What I would do instead is use the magic wand tool or press W. What I can then do is just click on the white space and delete that after I rasterize that, of course. So I can delete that now and there's no more white space. What I would then be able to do is use the dodge tool, go over him, sorry, not the dodge tool, the burn tool and go over him, darken him up a little bit. And then I can use the dodge tool to lighten up that other side as well where he's facing the sun. And then what I'd also be able to do is add a drop shadow to his legs there, like before. Obviously this isn't very perfect, but just for demonstration's sake, you can now see he's looking pretty good there. Like, as you can see with these kids here, they've got no shadows on them either. There's a few things you can do there as well. First things first, you could use the dodge tool on the, the actual render layer. So you can press O and Sorry again, that's the burn tool. You can use the burn tool to kind of darken that up a little bit, but it does decolorize it. So it doesn't look fantastic. What I would tend to do here instead is I would duplicate the layer of the two boys and I would kind of turn this around to make it look like the shadow is coming from the sun there. I would have to flip this as well. Just like that. And what you can do is if you right click the thumbnail here, you can select the pixels and you can use your brush tool by pressing B or by going to the side here. Now I would make this a darker color, something like a dark gray here and just go over it like that. What you can then do is add a multiply preset to it and change the opacity to something around 60% and then just cut out um, the rest of that with the polygon lasso tool. And there you have it. You've got a bit of a shadow there. I would just cut this out of his legs so it's not like that. And there you go. You've got a bit of a shadow on his legs there. So here we've got an external render of the same building, the, the laboratory space. That's where the internal perspective was looking inside, inside the laboratories there. Um, but let's say we wanted to add some more trees to this. In this scenario, I've rendered these trees in V-Ray on my Rhino file. But let's say for example sake, if I wanted to add some trees in the post-render process um, and add some trees in Photoshop, I can show you how to do that as well. So here I've got a PNG file tree. Let's say I wanted to just replace this tree here. All I'd have to do is just scale that down, make it look like it's sort of uh, the right scale in that scene. So over here, we've got about a six meter height, I believe. So this tree here is about six meters then. So first things first, just like the cutout people, I would use the burn tool just to darken up that layer a little bit. So I'd have to click on there and rasterize it and then just go over that tree um, with the burn tool just to darken up to blend it into the scene a little bit better. Since the sun's on this far side over here, there wouldn't be any um, highlights on the back side here. So I can leave that um, undodged unless you just go around the outside of it like this. That can kind of give a cool effect. I think here there's a little bit too much and I'd have to play around with the size of that. But for the most part, that looks pretty good. Again, if you wanted to add a shadow on the ground, you can just click on your render layer here and use the burn tool and just darken up the bottom bit there. So it's all pretty uh, easy and well to do when you've got a clear cutout PNG transparent background version of the image you're trying to import. However, sometimes you'll find files which are not as nice to deal with and this here is a good example of that. So let's say I wanted to add this tree into my file that doesn't look too good just like that, does it? So what I'd have to do is, first of all, I'd cut out this stock photo portion of the image here um, using the marquee tool. I would just use the re rectangular tool and find that layer and I would have to rasterize that and just delete that. What you can do then is, rather than having to cut around each kind of leaf here, which is a very detailed and long process to do. You don't want to have to do that. You can just use the multiply preset to get rid of that white background. So as you can see, it does give it a bit of transparency, which can be quite annoying and it might not be what you're after. So this is where it is important to try and find the best PNG files you can um, as the JPEGs and other kind of files are much harder to work with and um, require a bit more effort 
rather than just importing them into your file. But what you can do then as well is use your dodge or burn tool just to lighten it up or darken it up. And you can also change the brightness and contrast if you wanted to, um, to have that same effect so it's not as transparent but for the most part that looks pretty good and I'd be quite happy with that. So yeah that was a quick tutorial on how to add a uh, collage people and trees into your renders and drawings so I really hope you guys found that helpful if you did please leave a like and comment on the video um, I really appreciate you guys support and I hope to see you guys in the next video until then take care and good luck with your studies